Hello. The BBC have produced five programmes on our family business over the past five years and this is the second BBC episode in this series. This programme, BBC Homes Under the Hammer, is the most popular property programme in the UK. Before you start watching it, I will just give you three short points of information. Firstly, if your aim is to buy any investment property in the UK as a passive investor, then you must watch the main property video. The latest version is located at the top of our website, that's findukproperty.com. A link to that video is also shown at the end of this video. This main property video explains what are the best investment properties in the UK and how to buy and manage them. It covers everything you need to know. You should watch it in full. Secondly, what we do is that we provide complete investment property solutions to passive investors who may be located in the UK or anywhere in the world. We acquire low cost houses in over 28 towns in the North East and North West and then renovate them to good standards before renting them out. The properties are then sold by us as a complete package whereby we continue to manage and maintain the properties at our cost and provide the new owner with guaranteed rent for the long term. We have eight main categories of properties priced between £65,000 and £120,000. From small two-bed houses to large three-bed semi-detached houses with drives and large gardens and the latest prices are shown on our website. All houses are located in the north and are fully renovated, guaranteed and already rented out to good tenants. Our best value two-bed houses come with a large lounge, dining kitchen, two bedrooms, a family bathroom and rear yard all for under £70,000 and are fully guaranteed. As demand is higher than supply, our clients first make a reservation and then select the properties several weeks later when it comes to their turn. We are a family business established for 14 years and as of 2021, we have over 60 directly employed staff, over a thousand investors and we are managing over 2,000 houses all of which we have acquired and then renovated ourselves. We continue to buy and sell about 40 houses each month. We buy most of our houses direct from sellers, but in about 10% of cases, we do also use auctions like in this BBC episode. Finally, this particular episode is around four years old. It relates to the renovation of a three bedroom terraced house in the town of Burnley in East Lancashire, about 25 miles north of Manchester. The BBC production team followed our progress from buying the property at auction to full renovation and subsequent assessment. Myself and my daughter Rafia, who was in charge of renovations at that time, fronted this episode and after renovation the property was rented out. The property was selected by and transferred to one of our investor clients and we continue to manage it for them under our net guaranteed rent system. This video was filmed in 2018 and 2019, so the prices are out of date. Current prices are much higher. The main presenter of this episode is the ex-England footballer Dion Dublin. Here is the episode. Hello and welcome to the show. Now, no matter what stage you are at as a property developer, there's always something out there that suits you. Yes, it could be a flat that just needs a lick of paint, a house that needs total renovation, or a plot of land you could build your dream home on. Well, one place you can find all of the above and plenty more besides is your local auction house. An auction room is a busy place, bustling with brave bidders. It's easy to get carried away when you're anxious and you just don't want to lose out on that property. So did today's buyers have auction fever or did they escape unscathed? Let's find out. In Tipton, Dudley, a bungalow sends me down memory lane. It just reminds me of a grand house. You knew it was a cold night if you put it up to three bars. And in Burnley, Lancashire, there's problems and jokes I'd rather forget. It's actually a little bit of 
fungi growing. Whilst in Lewisham, South London, there are some issues that need a rethink. Oh, look. There's a thing. <laughs> 36, 250. All these properties have been sold at auction, and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid when they went under the hammer. So. I'm in Lancashire in the town of Burnley. Now, you know me, I do like the odd footy fact. So, here's a couple for you. In 1921, Burnley FC's 30 match run without defeat remained the longest on record until Arsenal 82 years later. And in 1956, the FA Cup tie against Chelsea was one of the longest. Chelsea finally won 2 0 after four previous draws. Can I kick it? I'm just on the outskirts of Burnley City Centre. I'm not too far away from the university, and we have got two train stations less than a mile away. Now, I know you can't see it, but the M65 is just over there. Now, the property I'm here to see is this. It's the first time presented on Homes Under the Hammer that I can say we've got an outside pool. <laughs> We're straight from the outside and straight into a, what I would say, an ample sized living or lounge area. So really got a nice high ceiling. I can see there's a ceiling rose there as well. So a little bit of detail in here. Nip all the wallpaper off, get it redecorated, change the floor as well. Feels a little bit screw with. You've got central heating. But you know what? I'd, I'd have liked a, a bigger window right there to let a bit more light in. But it's not a bad start. A lot of space to play with. Stairs going up to the bedrooms and then into the kitchen. And you know what? It does feel, I'm not going to say new, but it feels in good condition. And one of those kitchens, I would say, you'd possibly get away with keeping this if you're looking to rent it out. Uh, wallpaper's coming off the walls already, so continue doing that, redecorating here. You may get away with keeping the floor as well, so you could save yourself a few quid, but I have spotted in and around the window frame there a little bit of mold. On most occasions, when you do see mold, it's because a property has been shut up, there's been no airflow uh, at all for some time, therefore you do get a little bit of mould growing, but that doesn't worry me at all. I like these two rooms, and I like what I've seen so far. Okay, so upstairs then, right, let's do this half of upstairs first. Two bedrooms and a smell of damp as well, but no signs of it yet. Okay, um, young person's bedroom, judging by the, uh, the wallpaper, there's cars all over the wallpaper there. It's a more of a single bedroom, and then another bedroom here. The damp smell has got a lot stronger, and that's why. There's your damp right there, this wall here. Even before I touch it, it looks damp. You know what, it's been that damp in here, if you look closely down here, there's actually a little bit of fungi growing. So this, at some stage, has been absolutely sopping. It is a bit of a concern. That needs to be sorted out ASAP. Don't let it get any worse. And you know what? Thinking about it now... Right, OK. Uh, as I thought, this used to be one bedroom. They've actually made it into two. I'm not a massive fan of that normally, but it seems to work the way they've done it. Um, there isn't uh, much room in here at the moment, but I would class myself as a fun guy. I just had to get it in. Anyway, you need to find out if that mushroom is because of a leak. I'll stop the corny vegetable puns now. Let's move on. 
Okay, on the other side upstairs, you've got the third bedroom, which is uh, a young person's bedroom again, but it's the bathroom I want to show you, which is in really good nick. You know, the tiles seem okay as well. This is one of those where you think to yourself, you might be able to keep this, but you might be fussy and you might want to put a new one in. It's your decision, but it doesn't look too bad to me. We invited along an agent from the auction house who sold the property to see what he thought of this house. First impressions when I walked in, it does need a lick of paint, needs decorating throughout. Typically could do with a new kitchen, new bathroom, um, but other than that, the layout's good and, and doesn't need to be changed. Oh well, the agent and I differ on the kitchen and bathroom situ. I think for rental these would be fine. So what would this fetch on the rental market? Typically, a property uh, in this area will rent between £350 and £375 per calendar month. So, having had a good look around this property, the first thing I would want to do is investigate that damp upstairs. You'd possibly get away with keeping the bathroom. I'll possibly say the same about the kitchen as well. And then refurb through the whole of the property. Try and bring it back to its former glory of a lovely family home. Let's see who wanted it when he went under the hammer. Unfortunately, we missed the bidders for this lot, but we can catch up with the auctioneer just as bidding was coming to a close at £36,250. Selling them for first time at 36250 Second time, third and final time, fair warning. Still so very well done. That successful bid of £36,250 belonged to Tariq. He runs a property business with his family all working with him. I met Tariq and daughter Rafia before when they bought a terrace also in Burnley. What we do is we acquire properties, we renovate them to a good standard, we rent them out and then we sell them to investors uh, mainly from London but also investors overseas and we provide all the after sales services and giving them a, a guaranteed rent, looking after the maintenance, looking after the management. Well, the family have this wrapped up for sure. Buy, renovate, sell to clients and then manage the properties. Currently they are looking after a staggering 850 properties built over 10 years. Let's see how they got on. This place is looking good. Over to Tariq and Rafia to tell us what they've done. And uh, we just demolished that and so started removing the, uh, the uh, wallpaper. We found that the plaster was... As well as all that, they've taken the time to add a completely new bathroom suite and a whole new kitchen. Both of them looking very nice. Knowing the market as they do, they've kept this as a two-bedder rather than trying to squeeze a third in at the front two bedroom with two lounges uh, so we put a, a doorway into the corridor and, uh, and made it into two lounges. We're buying and selling about 30 properties each month and in work in progress at any one point in time there's about 60 uh, yes. which are being worked on at various stages so we are quite busy. They have a simple business model. They pick up properties for a good price, do all the legwork and sell them as a package to investors. Tariq, it's good to see you again. Nice Rafia, to you. same to you. Nice to see you. Um, you're still rolling on. Has the business model changed or is it going from strength to strength? No, it's the same business model. Uh, it's a family business. We acquire properties, we renovate them, we rent them out and then we sell them to investors, mainly from London but also from the rest of the world. And then we continue to manage and maintain them on their behalf as a long-term investment. Okay, is it going well? At the moment, we've got 35 um, properties that are in heavy renovations. And right now? Right now, yes. So we've got various teams working on them. The other 30 are almost finished pending handover, so there's altogether 65 properties. So who's managing them? You've got 35 ongoing or you've got 35, te well, 35 teams or well, 35 jobs? Th no, it's 35 ongoing, so yes. we've got a few different teams. Okay. So I make the big decisions. <laughs> do you, uh, do you, Rafi, do you oversee I all of those I, decisions with all of those properties? Yes, I myself go to each individual property and I contribute quite heavily towards the plan and the reporting, what's going to happen to this house and then obviously all the guys 
all the specialist uh, guys go in and do their assessments and then I hand it over to someone that this is what you need to do and then I oversee it and then once it's finished I go back with my report and I check it. Has this been done? Has this been done? That's not been done, so you know. Oh really? So you Yeah, that yeah, yeah tick it off. So and then if something's not been done, then it needs to be done. Okay. So we'll do it. Yeah. So what's on Rafia's checklist for this property? We need to get our roofing team in, we get our plumbers, our electricians, uh, we get everything assessed. Mm. I myself decide what happens internally and externally. For example, are we going to wallpaper, are we going to paint, are we going to sandblast, or are we going to just paint the front? And then uh, we get everything together, I sign it off, and then yeah. All ready to go. All ready to go, that's right. Okay, okay. If you're ready to go, what's the, what's the situation with this one then? Tell us what so you're going to do. This one externally, we're going to be uh, sandblasting the front and possibly the back, and we'll be doing a bit of rendering uh, around the back uh, just to make it neat and up. And uh, internally, we will be stripping everything, wallpaper, new flooring. Um, the kitchen seems to be okay, so we'll just be upgrading that, just touching it up, fixing it up. Possibly a new bathroom upstairs. Um, and then, yeah, just full decoration. There's a little bit of mould on the walls, uh, a little bit of damp upstairs as well. In yes. The, uh, in the corner so of the, the rooms as well. The first thing, the roofing team will go in, do their assessment, fix any tiles or the, uh, around the roof mm -hmm. and also the chimney. Uh, lead, and then uh, we'll have to uh, see if that uh, has, you know, sorted out the solution. Okay. And uh, what kind of finish are we going in here? We go. I can see there's the, so, the floor uh, hard floors down at the moment, which which look okay. Hmm. What are you going for carpet? We're going to change it to carpet, and we're going to strip. Uh, we're going to do magnolia paint. Nice. And uh, we'll probably do uh, skirting boards and doors. We'll probably seam it. To okay. Probably do that grey. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So With a theme. But have a bit of a theme going, yeah. So. <laughs> What's the theme going to be? What's the colour scheme and theme so, going to be in this one then? This one we're looking at magnolia and grey. Okay. So it's worked quite well for us in the past. Okay. Is that why you leave? Uh, oh. I think you uh, leave it. I, I leave get it, involved with in the details. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you leave, leave that to Rafa. <laughs> leave that to her. Yeah. I look at the financials. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, what are the financials? Why are you so basically, about? I mean, this property, I mean, uh, you know, the bid price was uh, thirty-six to fifty. Uh, it's actually going to end up costing us just under forty thousand mm -hmm. pounds with all the costs. And then uh, we budgeted uh, with Rafia less than ten thousand pounds spent okay. on it. Uh, and, uh, uh, and we're looking to uh, sell it as an investment package with everything included, mm -hmm. around 55,000 ideally. Depends on um, uh, the market at the time, but I think that's, that should be possible. Okay, so trying to keep your budget below 10 grand? Yeah, yeah, below 10 grand. I mean, our model is that we don't actually make a lot of profit from the, the buying and selling. Mm -hmm. our, our, our profit comes from the long term. Uh, management and the fact that a lot of our investors actually come back and buy more properties because they get good value. I guess with a business model like that, it's important to get them turned around quickly. So how long do they expect the work to take? This one, once we start it, depending on the uh, plumbing and the electrics, it will take between six to eight weeks. Okay. So start to finish, all ready to go? Yeah, start to finish, all ready to go. Well, listen, good luck with this one. Yeah. Hope everything works out for you. Thank you. Terry, good luck. Thanks very much indeed. Yeah. Thank Rafi, you. Rafi, nice to see you. Thank you. All right, thank you. So Tariq and his family's property business seems to be going from strength to strength. But will this particular project be another valuable addition to their ever-growing empire? And will it be the only project with an outside pool? You can find out how they get on later in the programme. Still to come in Lewisham, South London, I always think it's good to share. It's so lovely, wouldn't it be nice to let everyone share and benefit from it? Whilst in Burnley, Lancashire, we got to go backwards before going forwards. It looked a lot worse than we, yeah. we got it originally, and then it got better. Well, we found out how one story turned out. But I can hear you asking, how did the other two get on? Let's find out. California. Time to return to Burnley, the California of the Northwest, everybody calls it. Well, you don't believe me? Well, check this out. It's the first time presented on Homes Under the Hammer that I can say we've got an outside pool. So maybe you couldn't have a Beverly Hills style pool party, but this three bed terrace did have a lot going for it. With a good sized lounge area and a fairly new kitchen that wouldn't take too much to sort. However, upstairs, water had caught my attention yet again. But this time, it was nothing to party about. You know what? It's been that damp in here 
But if you look closely down here, there's actually a little bit of fungi growing. Well, I like a bit of prefab sprouts, but I'm not sure about a stone house sprouting. That's just not for me. Trying to turn a profit on this troubled terrace was Tariq and his daughter Rafia, who paid £36,250 at auction. We acquire properties, we renovate them, we rent them out, and then we sell them to investors. Our model is that we don't actually make a lot of profit from the, the buying and selling. Our, our, our profit comes from the long-term uh, management and the fact that a lot of our investors actually come back and buy more properties. He's going the distance. Yes, it's a marathon, not a sprint for the business model of this father and daughter team. But could they keep to their budget of under 10 grand and stick to their six to eight week timescale? We've returned to find out. Well, I think the change is pretty obvious. Before we've even got inside, you can see Tariq and Rafia have cleaned and repaired the stonework on the outside of the property, as well as repainting and repairing all the guttering. Inside, the whole building has been re-skimmed, re-carpeted and given a fresh, bright coat of paint. In the bathroom, Tariq and Rafia have used panelling on the walls. It's very durable for a house that's intended to be on the rental market. However, it's not just the things you can see that have changed. So we did do a part rewire on the electrics in this house, and of course we had our own internal electrician to do all of that who was completely compliant. Uh, one of the other things that we had to do was uh, change the boiler and uh, sort out a few of the plumbing issues. I think it's a mark of Tariq and Rafia's professionalism that they make sure these things are done properly. Unfortunately for them, there were more hidden problems than they bargained for. We had penetrative damp behind on this wall over here where the boiler is, so the gutter wasn't aligned properly and the water was coming in and causing penetration. Because it was quite extensive, we had to hack off the plaster and treat, treat the damp there and replaster. Uh, we had rising damp on this internal wall here, and we also had this on this party wall, which is adjacent to the next door's uh, property. So we tanked that entire wall, whereas the internal wall, we just injected it because we didn't know, need to follow the procedure um, of notifying anyone uh, in accordance with the party wall act. Tanking a wall is when a physical or chemical membrane is applied to the whole of the wall to protect it from damp. It doesn't require access to both sides of the wall, unlike injection treatment. So Tariq and Rafia wouldn't need to disturb the neighbour's property. However, it's still an awful messy job. The property looked a lot worse after we'd spent a week or two in it because all the plaster was off, uh, you could see the brick, uh, you know, it looked a lot worse than we, yeah. we got it originally, and then it got better. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show even the most experienced developers can get caught out with unwelcome surprises. That extra work meant the renovation took about 10 weeks, a little over their initial six to eight week timescale. But how did it affect the 10 grand budget? Our original budget was about £10,000. Uh, in the end, we ended up actually spending about almost £13,000. Well, with the purchase price and the spend now coming in at £49,250, they are very near that fifty-five grand investment package figure they were hoping to achieve. We asked two local agents to take a look and give us their opinion. I think the layout works really well for a young family or a couple. Um, the bedrooms are all quite well proportioned with the bathroom at the back, I think works extremely well. The major selling point is it doesn't need any more work doing to it, so for a first time buyer, all they have to do is raise the deposit and they can move straight in. And what would the property be worth if it were to be sold on the open market? If this property was to be placed on the open market, I would expect 
for the owner to achieve in the region of about £55,000. This father and daughter team must know everything there is to know about developing. Surely. Oh, no, and you never know at all. There's always more to learn. There's always more to experience. It's, um, you never know what you're going to get. Yeah, that's right. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, you're learning all the time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> As you've seen on today's show, property developing is a long road of ups and downs. Some buyers can steer themselves through pretty smoothly and painlessly. Ah, while others hit the buffers. What will happen next time? Find out and join us for more Homes Under the Hammer. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. If you are interested, then please visit our website. Watch the main property video in full and complete any inquiry form. You will get brochures and more details and one of our staff will call you to understand your needs and answer your questions. You can provide your ID and get a draft reservation agreement to see the full terms. After this you can also have a Zoom video meeting with myself or one of the senior staff to explain your requirements and cover any remaining questions. Please visit our website at findukproperty.com now. Thank you. Or you can continue watching one of these videos. Either select the main property video that covers everything you need to know about UK property investment. It is divided into four sections and I recommend you watch all of them. Or select one of the BBC TV videos. This is one of five BBC programmes produced over the past five years on our family business. Thank you.